Hi everyone, this is Freddy with Superbike Unlimited and today we're gonna bring you another and possibly the final update on this BMW World Superbike project that we're doing here. So for this one, just to jump right off, I wanna start off by addressing some um, questions and comments from the last one. So I took some, uh, some notes here. So there's a few things you guys asked about. Um, one of the things was the comments about the way the engine sounded. So we'll show some of that today, but basically, <clears throat> some of the, the the engine notes you were hearing especially at part throttle why the bike sounded a lot more like deeper and kind of unusual compared to a traditional inline four engine is because this bike has a split throttle body uh setup so that means there's two throttle servos and you basically have a bank one and bank two which is the first two cylinders and the, the second two cylinders cylinder one and two and then three and four split and can operate independently of each other so with the uh the electronics that we have here you can activate that split throttle strategy and the idea is that it could potentially make the bike feel easier to manage the torque easier to open the throttle and manage grip uh, especially in like a lower grip condition on the side of the tire so and it's going to sound totally different because essentially you've got more throttle opening on one side versus the other so it almost sounds kind of like a like an odd fire or a twin or a triple or something so we'll go over that um the and we'll show because i've activated that function on a couple of the modes on here and so we'll you'll be able to hear the difference engine life yes this thing has really low engine life i can pull up the exact specs later but i i think the service interval on it is something it's it's like 2,000 kilometers or something like that um i'll pull it up later on and we'll go over that with the customer of course but yeah, for sure you wouldn't want to use this on the street. <laughs> it's, that would be very impractical. But with this being a dedicated track tool, um, that is, it's not that unusual. Most superbike spec engines that are really sort of high output, there's obviously a lot more stress on the engine. And that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to fail if you push it past that, but the... Um, you know the output of the engine is going to substantially begin to decline beyond that that service time for sure people push them past that and i don't recommend it but you know it's, it's possible um let's see the exhaust a lot of people were asking about that exhaust system the exhaust is specifically made it to this engine spec in the uh alternative oil pan so yes we can sell you this exhaust we can sell every single thing we've provided on this for the most part um you know this stuff is literally that's what we do we, we've built this whole motorcycle we provided every single part on the bike so top to bottom all that stuff was provided by superbike unlimited so for sure we can provide that exhaust but you can't fit it to an otherwise standard motorcycle uh let's see um horsepower so some of you guys were kind of commenting about you know, that, that wouldn't make that much horsepower on our dyno. Well, that's possible, you know. I don't know what your dyno, you know, what kind of numbers your dyno produces. That being said, our dyno is well known for not reading super high. Like, uh, you know, for comparison, a really good R1 typically makes like in the mid 180s to low 180s here, depending on the spec of the ECU and stuff. Like a, with a kit ECU, obviously, I don't know how much you know about those, but we can't change ignition timing on the current spec. So relatively conservative mapping and things like that, you know, we're in the 180s. And as you can see, a full, nice spec MRCK stock 1000 style bike on our dyno makes 190. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe if, if, a, if a bike like that makes less on your dyno, then for sure this bike would also make less. Um, but our dyno doesn't read super high. Um, and then another one, I wasn't feeling super well when we made our last uh, video. I was actually super sick. Um, but you guys actually made a really excellent observation and i did not pick the best dyno graph when i was overlaying our uh, comparison so good news we're gonna correct that right now and i did i did make a comment on our uh um youtube like story uh, i made a post on our youtube account so here we're gonna pull up the same com uh, graph that we had before though so this is the uh mrck um uh stock engine s1000 with a full kit race ecu full exhaust and that made 190.16 on the comparison that we had before an 83 torque and here we go a very clear 230.89 peak horsepower there's no you know misleading <laughs> no trickery or anything like that this is just what the bike made and here you can see it's making about 45 more horsepower um, 
at uh, essentially at the red line on the on the standard spec engine. So pretty pretty impressive stuff. Um, for sure, I think this thing would be an absolute missile. And yeah, any concerns you had about the horsepower output, hopefully those have addressed them. It's for sure strong. Um, and today we're gonna we're gonna fire this thing up, and I'm gonna first I'm gonna do some more pulls. Um, we have uh, I don't want to go crazy on this thing because, as we've addressed, um, the life of this engine's not tremendous. So the, you know the mileage on the dyno it counts towards that. So I'm not gonna just sit there and beat the hell out of this thing, but. Um, I do want to make, we have to test a few changes that we made. Now that we've got the dash back, everything's been updated. We can actually properly select our modes now, and I can test that stuff. I can test outputs, which I just want to try a few things because we're basically setting this thing up. Obviously, if we turned everything up to 11, so to speak, on this bike, it would be aggressive, <laughs> you know, probably kind of intimidating for some people to ride. Um, even an experienced motorcycle racer or rider, um, the, you know, if you had this thing dialed all the way up to the max, it, it would be a bit much. So... We're gonna have a few different modes, and I'm gonna I'm gonna provide this customer with some maps. But essentially, the first one's just gonna be a dry only setting where all four all four modes, even the wet mode, is gonna be for a dry tire. So we're gonna set all that stuff up, and essentially we're just gonna give him varying degrees of power output. So on the wet setting, it's gonna be really more docile for sure. The split throttle functionality will be engaged, and we'll just have a pretty aggressive torque cap on each gear um, up until the higher gears we'll, we'll open it up a bit but essentially we're just going to make the bike really easy to ride in that one and then we'll scale that all the way up to the most aggressive mode which is just going to be no split throttle very aggressive throttle delivery you know that's gonna, it's almost going to be like if you put a qualifying tire on a very high grip track that's going to be that one so and then we'll make a, a an actual more traditional like mixed conditions map and then like a wet map and stuff and he'll have the ability to put that stuff on here Hopefully, I don't think this guy's ever going to ride this bike in the rain. Um, I, this is definitely not uh, based on speaking with him. I don't think that's going to happen. But just in case, we want him to have all the tools that he needs. So uh, so we're just going to validate some of that stuff on the dyno. I want you guys to be able to hear the split throttle stuff again. And then we'll, we'll do another um, full throttle pull on the higher torque mode. And we'll just see. I'm going to strap it down a little bit more and try to see if we can we can get rid of the tire slip issue. And uh, yeah, we'll see if it makes any more power. If it doesn't, then it's already made all the power in the world. So um, yeah, that'll be good. Then once we're done, we're going to finish button this thing up, and uh, we're going to bust out the scales and see how much it weighs. And I think that's going to pretty much do it. So stay tuned if you want to see all that stuff. together for you guys but um basically i just did some more full throttle pulls it did not make any more power it makes it pretty much the same and honestly 
not the best dyno tire. That thing is shagged. Um, it's this thing is violently fast in the uh, the high output mode that I made on here. Um, you'd only want to use that in very ideal conditions for sure. Um, but yeah, this thing's a, it's a monster. It's amazing that you can feel something like this on the dyno. I mean, this bike is going to be a rocket on the racetrack. It, I I hope that when we do the setup on this thing, the plan was for me to come along with our customer and and bring Martin and you know work on the chassis, uh, work on the suspension a bit. You know, get the bike just kind of in the window for this guy. And of course, work on the electronics, find a setting that's optimal and um, just help them feel comfortable, show them how some of the stuff works, uh, you know, just do the whole process. And uh, ideally, if we do that, I'll throw a leg over it. Um, and if I do that, if that does happen, we'll make a video of it and just try not to laugh because I'm sure I'm not going to do this thing any justice, you know, but, um, you know, that that may be in the future. It's something we've talked about. So we'll see if our schedules all work out and stuff. And um then for sure that that's probably what we're going to do because it makes the most sense and uh, naturally i need to ride it just to make sure everything's working okay so um but yeah we'll look at a, a dyno graph here it actually still has that dip up top so we're not spinning there anymore this time it, it made 229 um and don't just ignore this stuff here this is actually noise from and that's why i have this axis set to speed i'll just show you we're, we're getting some kind of rpm interference it might be that one of our pickups is going bad and we've only got one that will fit on this thing so um yeah so you see that that that's interference um so our rpm reading is is not great so that's for torque calculation it does not affect uh, horsepower calculation at all so um this gives you you know a pretty clear reference and we can see that this thing is very consistently making around 230 horsepower um you know i did it before i really warmed up the oil uh today i did not have enough time to do that um and also i just don't want to have this thing on the dyno all day so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna call that. We're happy with it. And then after the uh, you know the pulls there, I, I just went through the, the 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 various modes I created. I'm gonna review the the mo the logs on this and i2 Pro, which is Motex uh, data analysis software that we're using. With this system uses a Bosch ECU and a C125 dash, which is where all of our logging comes from. So I'm just gonna have a look at those logs and just see how everything looks there, um, and just to confirm everything looks as I expect it to. But also it gave you guys that kind of sound check function where you could very audibly hear the difference part throttle from our higher output mode to those other modes, especially once it's really obvious. It almost sounds like a traction control cut or something like that. Uh, what that is, is again, just the split throttle strategy. So TC is off. So there is no TC cutting at any point during this video. You may see that I'm holding a button while I'm doing pulls. That's one thing I'm, I, I'm manually holding an override button on there. I've got traction control turned off anyway, but I'm also holding a button because there's a, there's an effect that can ha make it still come on. And that's the, the way to override that. So next we're going to pull this thing down. We'll get it fully dressed up and prepped as if it's going to be on the racetrack. And we'll do a walk around just to show you what it looks like in, in its final trim. And then we're going to throw it on our 1% scales just to make sure uh, exactly what this thing weighs with some fuel in it and kind of give you an idea what to expect with a bike in this spec what the on-track weight is going to be like all right guys as promised i'm just going to do a quick walk around on the bike and show you what it looks like in this this final spec um this is essentially how it's going to leave other than obviously we're going to put the slick back on the uh i'm really happy with how it came out with this new bodywork looks really aggressive and super aerodynamic All right, next we're gonna grab the uh, the scales and set everything up to weigh it, and uh, I think that's gonna be a wrap. Okay, so we've got our scale. Obviously, the front of the bike's already on here. And uh, so we're gonna go ahead and, Martin, if you wanna just lower that. All right, and then you can put, you can move the stand. And then just hold the tail so that it's kind of like balanced. Just minimal input, exactly like that. It's very light. <laughs> 356, 357. 
you got how much you putting on there? 357, we'll say, just to be safe. Wow. Okay. That's got a really low fuel load right now, like probably less than a gallon. So something to, to keep in mind, but still super impressive. That is a very light motorcycle. Something else just to look at here, you can see the weight distribution there. So that's 48% of the weight is on the rear. So it's a pretty nicely balanced motorcycle as well. Just kind of an interesting uh, component to share there. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up. I also just want to show you guys, we actually did wind up getting our engine stamp for the spare engine. It looks really nice. I just wanted to point that out because we were waiting on it before and we had this thing sitting on a tire. It didn't look super professional, but look at that. It's good to go now. And once again, this is our, our final product here. Again, we're going to put the slick back on, but we are otherwise done. And I just want to say thank you guys for watching this. We really appreciate it. And, uh, you know, we've had a few customers uh, that I've actually talked to on the phone recently that watch the videos and stuff. Thank you for supporting our shop. It's truly what gives us the ability to do this stuff. So if you like these videos and you want to keep seeing more of this stuff, go to superbikeunlimited.com, buy stuff on our website. It's already awesome prices and we have the best stuff around. So uh, please consider doing that. And in the meantime, we're going to keep working on stuff. We've got some really cool projects uh, coming up for sure. Some major updates for the R1 project are next. Um, you guys are always asking about that in this uh, one of our KTM Supermoto projects. Both of those are literally next on the chopping block. So you're going to see a lot of uh, really exciting updates for the Yamaha. And same for the KTM. We've got some cool stuff planned for it. So stay tuned. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.